folks, this session is going to look to cover how to study and learn Leaving Cert history essays. Over the course of the session, we're going to look to break down the marking scheme, give, um, I suppose, a student-friendly kind of understanding of how the marking scheme works and look to how we can use the marking scheme for, advan for our advantage in order to kind of maximise the marks we receive firstly across each paragraph that we write at Leaving Cert history and then at a wider scale across, whole, uh, across the whole essays that we write. After we break down the marking scheme, we're going to look to essentially break down and go through different st study strategies that you can apply to any Leaving Cert history essay that you're looking to study. And we're going to share those with um, you guys and attendees as well. Before we get moving on today's session, I'd just like to highlight what's available on Exam Revision's website in terms of Leaving Cert history. So the whole course is covered um, for Leaving Cert history. So if we click into USA in the wider world here. The whole course is covered in or from the perspective of there's a pre recorded video lessons. So that's me kind of recording the lesson and walking you through each different topic on the Leave and Cert history course and explaining the finer details and the main events that take place over that before linking that back to exam situations and showing you how often um, each question or topic comes up. Secondly, we have the whole course covered in PowerPoints, H1 standard notes, and what you just seen on the screen there was um, my favorite aspect of the Leave and Cert history course, which is those or exam revisions, Leave and Cert history course, which is those self-correcting quizzes. I can't emphasize the importance of quizzing yourself and actively testing yourself on leaving cert histories topics in order to kind of I suppose maximize the benefits of your study. You can what you'll see on the screen there is just a kind of an example of the H1 standard notes, which use timelines, icons, just to kind of provide a visual representation of those notes as well. And um, all of that's available on exam revisions websites and um, really, really handy study tools to kind of maximize the mark that you're running there for leaving cert history. Just to kind of show you where we're going to go today. Um, first thing we're going to look at is the marking scheme for leaving cert history. So I'm going to go through a detailed breakdown of what the marking scheme is. I'm going to show you what it looks like and then I'm going to break it down in student friendly language. Most importantly, I'm going to show you how you use the marking scheme. The marking scheme is what's given to Leave and Cert History examiners when they're correcting your essays. How you use the marking scheme to maximize the amount of marks that you receive across different paragraphs and then across wider essays as well. So we use the information that's available to us to guide the type of answers that we give. Secondly, I'm going to highlight how I suggest you structure your paragraphs to maximize um, the marks that you receive. So I suggest using appeal paragraph approach, point explain, point evidence explain link. I'm going to go through that in detail, show you multiple examples of what that looks like in practice and show you how you can maximize your uh, structure of your paragraphs to, I suppose, maximize the results that you get. Next, we're going to look at how to plan for essays. So I suggest you plan at both micro and macro levels. Macro levels, kind of looking at a wider picture, kind of zoomed out view of what the essay is going to look like. What are our eight paragraph titles that we're going to discuss? Micro, what are the finer kind of pieces of evidence and historically correct references that you're going to use in your essays in order to structure those essays to maximize the results that you get? And then finally, I'm going to show you how you study for Leaving Cert History essays. I'm going to share with you guys a template uh, essay study plan that I give to all my students. All my students engage in this practice once a week with different essays over the course of two years. By the end of those two years for Leaving Cert History, they've really ingrained and kind of, I suppose, mastered that study process and looked at how we can structure our essays and study for our essays in order to enable us to recall that information on the day of our exam. Really, really important session that I'm covering today, something I'm extremely passionate about and something that, or it's a process I engage with, with my students over the course of two years. First thing we're going to look at today is the Leaving Cert History Marking Scheme. So this is what the front page of that marking scheme looks like from an examiner's perspective. This marking scheme is given to all Leaving Cert History examiners who are essentially the people that are correcting your Leaving Cert History essays and your exams um, over the course of July and um, when they correct your exams the month after you obviously sit the exam. This is the front page of the booklet. It gives them lots of information. It tells them what paragraph should be, how each paragraph is marked, what type of things examiners are looking for in each paragraph and each essay. So this is a hugely valuable piece of information that we're going to need to use and need to understand to guide what our paragraphs and what our essays should look like. 
next thing we need to look at in terms of our leave insert history or in, in terms of the leave insert history marking scheme is our cm and oe so cm essentially stands for cumulative mark and it's basically the mark that you'll receive for the historical content evident within your essay so you're marked upon the essentially i like to refer to it refer to it as the historically correct references that you make and that cm is marked out of 60 i'm going to show you what that cm looks like now in one minute second thing that you pick up marks for in your leaving or history essays is your overall evaluation now this is a mark assigned to your essay based upon the general quality of your answer and i suppose how you've answered your essay within the parameters or within the context of the set question so have you answered the question that's been asked so you're always marked out of 40 marks and it's more of a snapshot snapshot judgment that the examiner will make on your essay basically after they've read the whole thing so your cumulative mark is i suppose added up as the examiner corrects your essay while your overall mark is a snapshot decision made at the end and he marks it out of 40 then as a result of that direct quote or direct reference to the marking scheme that's provided to leave insert history examiners and this is what we'll call a sliding scale so your cumulative mark or your cm which i'm going to refer to it from now on is marked on a sliding scale out of 12 so it's marked from 0 to 12 the least amount of marks you can receive for your paragraph is 0 the most amount you can receive is 12. That or the or the idea of a sliding scale means that the examiner will read your paragraph and give it a grade or assign a grade via 0 to 12, depending on whether it's excellent, very good, good, fair or poor. Now, I'm going to show you this in a little bit more student friendly language on the next slide to, because it's going to show us what what our paragraphs need to say. But I just want to highlight one word to you now. Um, that's, I suppose, a key word in a document and a key word we as historians or we as Leaving Cert history students need to consider in every aspect of our, of our historical writing. That word is analysis. We're going to see that word come up again and again over the course of um, this document, the Leaving Cert history marking scheme. And it's going to really need to guide and tell us how we need to, I suppose, phrase our writing for Leaving Cert history cumulative mark sliding scale would look like this in a little bit more student friendly language so the examiner has to assign a descriptor to the paragraph that you've written so our descriptors are down the left hand column here and each descriptor has a mark assigned to it so we're going to start at the top and work our way down to the bottom so if you look at the first descriptor an excellent paragraph will receive 11 to 12 marks um, and i suppose the characteristics of that an excellent paragraph looks like this. That paragraph must be an outstanding piece of analysis, exposition or commentary, clearly expressed, accurate and must contain substantial information. Now, I just want you to take a minute and just think about the characteristics of an excellent paragraph there. An outstanding piece of analysis. To me, it sounds very, very difficult to achieve. And we're going to look at, I suppose, the most common awarded marks for paragraphs at a later point but let's just keep that at the forefront for mind a very good descriptor will receive um ninth or eight to ten marks and the characteristics of that very good paragraph will be very good information accurate and clearly expressed before i move forward i just want to maybe highlight the differences between those two paragraphs an excellent paragraph outstanding piece of analysis or a very good just an eight to, or just a uh, or very good very good information and receive eight to ten so there's a huge discrepancy or huge difference between what an excellent paragraph and a very good paragraph looks like and that's going to dictate i suppose how we're going to look for and structure our whole essays a good paragraph then six to seven marks worthwhile information reasonably well expressed i'm going to highlight that phrase worthwhile i'll come back to that at a later point but very very achievable and i like to think about myself can I provide worthwhile information in Leaving Cert history under a time in a time pressurized environment? I think that's way more achievable than giving an outstanding piece of analysis under that time and that pressurized situation. A fair paragraph, you'll receive three to five marks, and the descriptors are limited information, barely stated, and a poor paragraph, hopefully none of us will be achieving this zero to two marks trivial or irrelevant grave errors included now let's look at these in a little bit more detail before we progress focus in on our cumulative mark and our excellent descriptor so 
as we can kind of hopefully gauge by the judging by the characteristics of an excellent paragraph outstanding piece of analysis it's going to be extremely rare to be awarded an 11 to 12 marks on a paragraph in a leaving cert history essay i like to kind of phrase this or think about this situation is in order for you to achieve an 11 to 12 or an excellent descriptor on each paragraph you almost need to portray the historical event in a new life for the examiner that's extremely difficult to do examiners are very experienced historians they've seen and studied these events over the course of years and decades and it's very hard to portray that event in a new life for the examiner so we need to manage our expectations around thinking okay i'm going to achieve 11 to 12 in every single paragraph because that's probably not going to be the case and if we look at how those marks are awarded it's very rare that they're actually given to students so we need to just manage our expectations around that excellent descriptor and we need to look at the other descriptors that maybe are more achievable in a time uh, sensitive situation such as the leave insert history exam and we're going to plan for our essays using that now so if we look at the descriptors good and fair the most common paragraphs awarded are good and fair so in that three to seven kind of mark range that we'll uh, that we'll expect to get and this is really important because it's going to tell us how many paragraphs we need to write in our leave insert history essays to maximize the amount of marks that we receive so we're going to use this information that is given to us in the marking scheme these are the most commonly awarded marks three to seven and we're going to use that to kind of guide how long our leave insert history essays should be so that's why i kind of stress the importance of from a student's perspective you need to have an understanding of the marking scheme because it tells you what to do it tells you what type of information to include in your essays it tells you how you should structure your paragraphs it tells you what your paragraph should be about it also tells you how long your essay should be that's a question i get asked as obviously a leave insert history teacher and then a content creator for exam revision and i obviously work um hugely with students across the country through driven grinds and stuff as well it's how long should my essays be well it's actually in the it, it, there's rough guidelines of it in the marking scheme so we need to make reference and have a good understanding of that on the other end of the spectrum we have the overall evaluation or the oe as i'm going to refer to it now so the oe once again is that snapshot decision made by examiners and um, after they've read your essay and it's marked out of zero to 40. so when awarding the oe they're basically evol evaluating the quality of your answer by taking in three things into account firstly they're going to take into account what extent you have shown the ability to analyze the issues involved in the question for example is it more than narrative and the phrase i like to use with my uh, my history students is that as historians our job isn't to tell the story of history it's to analyze the story and look at trends and and investigate different impacts of that historical event so our job isn't to tell the story it's to analyze the story and that's really important to understand because that word analyze is made reference to in the marking scheme multiple occasions i'm going to highlight to you how much it actually comes up second thing the examiner is looking for when they're giving your overall evaluation or what they're taking into account is has the student used relevant evidence to support their analysis that's a phrase taken directly from the marking scheme and what you'll start to notice is the marking scheme hasn't said has the student used relevant evidence to support their um, answer or to support their explanation or description it's looking for you to analyze historical events so once again our job isn't to tell the story of history it's to provide evidence to support analysis this is telling us how we need to structure our individual sentences and paragraphs within the leaving cert history essay and i'm going to give you multiple tools to help you achieve that third thing the overall evaluation is i suppose or what examiners are taking into account when they're looking at the overall evaluation is they're looking at your ability to argue a case reach conclusions basically have you answered the question that's been asked and i can't stress the importance of this because obviously working with students across the country a question that i get asked a lot is uh, how do i just learn answers off for leaving cert history and it's something i'd never encourage a student to do for leaving cert history because the marking scheme actually wants you to be reactive it wants you to be be able to adapt the questions and phrasing of questions differently and wants you to actually think and consider about the historical events and the analysis that you're putting forward so i'd never recommend learning 
whole paragraphs off. We learn about different pieces of evidence and different pieces of analysis that we're able to adapt and use across multiple different ess essays and from across multiple different perspectives. And that's really important that uh, you have to answer the question that's been asked. I'm going to give you two strategies later on today on how you actually answer the question that's been asked and how you make sure that you do it in every single paragraph. Just to show you what the overall evaluation looks like from an examiner's perspective, this is a screenshot taken from the marking scheme. So once again, our overall evaluation is marked on a sliding scale, except our sliding scale this time is marked from zero to 40. So you'll see we have our different descriptors. Once again, we have excellent to very weak this time. And the sliding scale goes from zero to 40, as I said. So the examiner will read your essay. They'll add up your cumulative mark or your CM as they go throughout that essay. And afterwards, they'll make a snapshot, snapshot decision. I think that was a very good essay. I'm going to give it 31 out of 40. My justification is for that because it was very good. It wasn't excellent. And it did answer the set question that's been asked. It was it contained accurate and substantial information. So they use the descriptors here to make that snapshot decision. So they'll look at your essay, they'll read your essay, look at it and see which descriptor fits it best. So to look at that, or just before we move forward, I'd like to highlight one more word to you guys. So this is probably the fourth page of the um, marking scheme that we've seen so far. And I'm gonna highlight another word to you guys, analysis. It's the fourth page of the marking scheme, I believe, and this is the fifth time we've seen that word. So if we really need to, well, if we're considering H1 standard and we want those H1 and H2 level points that are associated with writing at this standard of, or writing at this uh, standard in history, we need to be considering analysis. We're not here to tell the story, we're here to analyze it. So our H1 standards and our H2 standards are gonna be providing analysis we're going to go above and beyond. We're not just going to be telling the story. We're going to be analyzing the story. And that's really, really important. So if we look at our overall evaluation or OE sliding scale, a little bit more student friendly language, this is what it's going to look like. So once again, we have our sliding scale and our descriptors in the left hand column here. And each descriptor is assigned a certain marking range. And then there's characteristics assigned to each descriptor. The examiner will look, read your essay see which characteristics fit your essay best, and then I'll assign a mark from that, uh, I suppose, marking range for your essay. So a descriptor or the marks awarded to an excellent overall evaluation for an essay is 34 to 40. And the characteristics of that is excellent in its treatment of the set question, particularly if it shows detailed learning, wide reading, I'm gonna under highlight that word, and analysis as well, or extensive coverage. So what that tells us is we need to be able to show that we have engaged in that kind of historical process of reading, looking at different perspectives from events. And for me, that tells us we need to go out above and beyond outside the classroom. What I suggest to my students that we change the, that idea of wide reading to wide reading, viewing or listening. Books, documentaries, podcasts, we need to be engaging with them, of course, across the two years of history, leaving cert history. And that's going to provide us with extra information, quotes from historians, quotes from key personalities along the course that we're going to be able to include in our essays. And I can't stress the importance of that. You know, it's often quite a throwaway statement from a teacher that you need to, you know, engage in your own independent reading and study on this topic. However, the Leaving Cert History course literally makes reference to that. So if you're thinking about the H1 standard at Leaving Cert History, that's what an excellent over OE mark is. It tells us we need to engage a wide reading and that's really important. Let's keep going anyway. We have our very good, it's gonna achieve a 28 to 33 mark on that sliding scale. And the characteristics are this, very good, but not excellent in its set treatment of the set question, accurate and substantial history. So very reasonable to achieve 20, 28 to 33 if we're engaging in, I suppose, the steps that we look to over the course of the year. Good paragraph then, 22 to 27. Good standard of treatment of the set question without being exceptional in the information or commentary supplied. Then we have fair 16 to 21. Fair attempt at the set question, but has, um, I suppose, defects, e.g. it's incomplete coverage, missing key events, or has irrelevant data that's included. Weak, hopefully none of us are going to be in this range, 10 to 15. Poor in that it fails to answer the questions as set, but has some merits. Very weak, zero to 10. Then we have our very poor answer, 
at best only offer scraps of information and hopefully none of us are going to be there. So that's our sliding scale, that's our OE and hopefully we understand from an examiner's perspective how they're marking your OE in your exam as well. It's really important and what I can't stress enough there is that idea of wide reading if we're looking at that H1 standard. Or the Leaving Cert History essays or Leaving Cert History marking scheme also tells us what a paragraph could be. So once again, question I'd often get from my students is, but like, what do I write a paragraph about? Very valid question as a student and very valid question for me as a teacher, like what is a paragraph supposed to be? Who would have thought that it's actually there available to us in the marking scheme? And this is what examiners will use when they're looking at your paragraph and they'll go, is that a paragraph? Can I mark that paragraph as one separate entity? Or should I group these two paragraphs together and mark those two? So this is what it gives us. I'm going to describe it in a little bit more student friendly language. So there's multiple different types of paragraphs. I'm going to suggest we're really only focused on one. That's what I suggest to my students. I'm going to highlight the T now because the other ones I find can be quite difficult. I'm going to go through the different types. But I'm going to highlight which one I think is the most important. So the different types of paragraph is firstly, you can write an introduction. An introduction should provide background information or historiography as a historian would call it. So historiography is when you provide background information about a situation or event or a key um, personality in history. So if we're looking at the Anglo-Irish Treaty, obviously the War of, Enden, War of Independence is going to be our historiography there and it's going to be rooted and it's going to be extremely important in our introduction. We could also use a paragraph to define key terms or what I like to do is explain the essay's approach and you'll see that in my examples as we progress down today. So in my uh, introductions, I explain the approach of my essay. So I'll usually react to the essay title. So if we're thinking Anglo-Irish Treaty, it's going to be something about controversial. I'll describe how the negotiations and the events thereafter the Anglo-Irish Treaty can be seen as controversial. Then I'm going to explain my approach to the essay. Firstly, I'm going to discuss how um, the selection of Irish delegation of the Irish delegation was controversial, as we see a wide spectrum of nationalism. So we have our examples of Collins, who was, I suppose, uh, Cahill Brewer, who was quite militant Republican. We have um, Arthur Griffith, who was quite moderate, and we have Collins somewhere in between. Secondly, my second paragraph is going to discuss, should De Valera have gone to London and the controversy associated with this? So when we describe our types of power or when we are looking to write our introduction, I suggest we ex explain the approach of our essay. We generally tend to not pick up good marks in our introductions anyway. Second type of paragraph, the one I'm going to suggest that we write almost all our paragraphs about is we write about an episode, phase or stage in a sequence of events. So if we're studying um, fascism in Italy or the characteristics of fascism in Italy, one episode, phase or stage in that sequence of events is the march on Rome and Mussolini's rise to power. What's important to understand is there, we don't lump two or three events into one paragraph because there should be one event in each paragraph, an episode phase or stage in a sequence of events. So for example, something or a non-example of that or something that you shouldn't do is if you're talking about Mussolini's rise to power, you shouldn't lump in the March in Rome and the 1924 general election into the same paragraph because there are two different episodes or uh, stages in that sequence of events. That's really important. And this is the par type of paragraph I suggest we write almost all of our paragraphs and leave insert history on. Thirdly, we can also write a paragraph on an aspect of a topic or issue um, with supporting factual references. And this is where it kind of gets a bit ropey for me or it gets a little bit difficult to actually define what our paragraphs are. So I wouldn't really recommend studying and focusing on on trying to do that. Number four, we could also write a point in an argument or discussion with supporting factual references. Once again, I think that's kind of bordering the line of opinion rather than actually discussing, um, you know, or analyzing historical events. So I kind of try to stay away from that or I try not to plan for those types of paragraphs. Um, and then fifthly, it could be an explanation of a relevant concept with supporting factual references. This I can actually see the benefit of and I can see the merit in. So if you're dealing with We'll stick with characteristics of life in fascist Italy. So you could write a paragraph explaining the characteristics of fascism with supporting factual references of where those characteristics of fascism are evident in Mussolini's Italy. So that's the type of paragraph that we could write there when we explain what fascism is. It would usually be paragraph one of that essay, if I'm being honest. And then five or, or six, um, this is where the kind of 
examiner can come in and kind of you know support you picking up extra marks so a type of paragraph could also be a number of significant relevant facts explanations or opinions which although are not connected can be taken and assessed as a paragraph equivalent and this kind of gives the examiner um a little bit of autonomy or a little bit of a freedom to kind of look at your exam and look at your essays and kind of lump to or to kind of especially in that kind of time pressurized situation and if you're really under time pressure in the exam you kind of just you know brain dump your ideas onto the page the examiner can kind of piece those together and mark that as a paragraph so really kind of handy and then finally we have a good concluding paragraph which is not mere re repetition now it can be hard to write a concluding paragraph and we'll go through steps that i'd suggest to do that in this session but once again we have to develop that skill over two years it shouldn't just be an afterthought so consequently we've looked at the leaving cert history marking scheme now we're going to use that information to basically tell us and guide us what we need to be writing how long our essay should be how we should structure each paragraph how long each paragraph should be so as a as a result of kind of analyzing the marking scheme i've come up with this idea of the sweet spot of leaving cert history essays and i call it the 10 paragraph essay i'm going to show you my thought process and how i've got to this point so every single essay that you write on your leaving cert history paper is marked out of 100 marks your cm cumulative mark accounts for 60 marks your oe your overall evaluation accounts for 40 marks as every paragraph is marked out of 12 cumulative marks and ev and the majority of students only receive four to seven marks per paragraph we're going to write 10 paragraphs including an introduction and a conclusion that means our cumulative mark is marked out of 60. if we divide 60 by 10 that means we only need to pick up six marks on average per paragraph. And that lands us right in that range of average marks that students achieve. So if you can take away one thing from today's sessions is that when you're planning your paragraphs and planning your essays, you should be aiming to write 10 different paragraphs because that means you only need to average six in every single paragraph, six out of 12. And you're going to be up towards the higher end scale of your cumulative mark and picking up close to 60 marks out of 60 and that's where we need to be so the sweet spot 10 paragraph essay is what we need to be aiming for when we're planning our essays kind of leads us into the question then that student my students would ask me at this point but what does good historical paragraphs look like so there's six things we're looking to do in our good historical paragraphs or six kind of characteristics of good historical writing that we need to start thinking about so in every single paragraph we need to react to the question we need to state the main point of your argument you need to provide factual evidence so i like to think about that as maybe not even six to eight maybe we could change this to like four to six historically correct references per paragraph let's get rid of six to eight there i prefer maybe four to six you have to explain the evidence that you provide so i suggest to my students pick one or two pieces of factual evidence and explain that evidence in i suppose the context of the question and the event that you're discussing in every second or third paragraph you should show evidence of outside reading watching or listening think back to our h1 standard of an oe marked on that sliding scale so h1 standards or h1 standard students will display evidence of outside reading is what the marking scheme says so in every second or third paragraph, we can display evidence of outside reading, watching or listening. That's pushing up our OE, pushing us up towards that H1 standard. And then at the end of every single paragraph, we need to link your argument back to the question. And I cannot stress the importance of that enough. Really quickly have a look at what good historical writing looks like as an example from a paragraph created by one of my students. So this is taken from Eucharistic Congress essay, it's paragraph four, where we discuss the social impacts of the Eucharistic Congress in Ireland. So I'll show you the length really quickly, and we're going to flick to the next slide to kind of go through this in a lot more detail, to be honest. So you can see that the length is quite standard there. When we write this on an A4 page, for me, what I'm looking for is just under half an A4 page. So a little less than half an A4 page is what we're looking for. So let's have a look at this answer and read through it together and break it down in lots more detail so we can identify the aspects of good historical. So let's read through it together. It could be argued 
that the social impacts experienced as a result of the Eucharistic Congress further consolidated the controversy of partition on the island of Ireland. Ireland. Firstly, the success of the Eucharistic Congress enabled the development of an Irish free state Catholic identity that was in complete contrast to the Ulster Unionist identity that had formed in the late 19th and 20th centuries. Consequently, this led to an us versus them mentality on the island, which was demonstrated over the next 100 years and is still evident in parts of the island today. Additionally, the, su the success of the Congress led to people becoming proud of the Catholic Irish identity. As a result of the development of two distinctive separate religious identities on the island of Ireland, communities became increasingly more divided. This is evident as at the time of the Congress, people in the North did not become involved in the event. Catholics traveling from the North were attacked for their participation in the Congress. Therefore, the clear differences in religious ideas increased tensions on the island. However, as famous activist John Hume stated, difference is an accident of birth and therefore should never be the source of hard or conflict. We can therefore see that the social impacts of the Eucharistic Congress consolidated the idea of partition on the island of Ireland. Let's break that down into a little bit more detail so you can clearly see the good characteristics of historical writing in play. So first thing this student did or did excellently was react to the question. So the question was around how Eucharistic Congress consolidated partition or contributed to partition. You consolidated partition, I apologize. So you can see here that they this student has uh, made the point to react to the question and said that it further, the social impacts further consolidated that idea of partition. Next thing that student did was state their main arguments. Their main argument was that there were separate identities on the island of Ireland that was contributed towards by the Eucharistic Congress. Next that thing that student did is going to provide four to six pieces of um, factual evidence. So she, uh, he's got or she's got four pieces of uh, factual evidence here. Lastly, that student has explained one or two pieces of that evidence. So you can see that through that statement there. This is evident as. Fifth thing that students done is provide evidence of outside reading, viewing or watching. So that was from an actual, that's from a podcast that I sent to my students around the Eucharistic Congress and identity on the island of Ireland. And, and the person discussing that podcast at the end included that quote from John Hume. So a really powerful quote there by Hume. And then the last thing that student has done has linked their argument back to the question. So she has bookended that paragraph there. She's reacted to the question in the first part and she's linked it back to the question in the last part. So what this student here is doing is kind of overtly saying or openly stating to the examiner, look at me, I'm answering the question that's being asked. So she's bookended that paragraph and that's what I'd suggest to do. You make a point in the first one and you link it back in the second one. Last thing that you'll see that has contributed to the student achieving a very high OE in her essay is she's used linking words throughout. So those linking words, I'd say you could see there, it could be argued that that's a linking word that helps us start a paragraph. Firstly, consequently, additionally, as a result of, this is evident as, however, we can therefore see multiple examples of how this student has used linking words that help, I suppose, contribute to the flow of her writing. So we've seen the marking scheme. We've kind of identified characteristics of good historical writing. We've seen sample answers of where that good historical writing has been applied. Now it's about using strategies to get us to that point. So the first strategy I'm going to suggest, suggest how we is how we structure our paragraphs. So in order to include the characteristics of good historical writing in our paragraphs, I suggest following a Peel approach. So Peel stands for point, evidence, explain, and link. Let's see what that looks like in action. So in order to help you write help you write in appeal part using appeal paragraph approach what i suggest using are these linking words so this is going to be shared with you guys as well or you can just screenshot the screen here i actually glue this into the front page of my students copy books and i suggest using it whenever you're writing a leaving cert history essay it'll help you structure your paragraphs so if you're looking to make a point you could use phrases like it could be argued that historians have argued the sources around this time suggest we can infer from the sources that 
if you're looking to provide evidence, there's two pieces of evidence that you can provide. Uh, evidence that's going to look to join ideas. So you can use phrases like firstly, secondly, thirdly, in addition, furthermore, moreover. And the second type of evidence you can provide is um, evidence that's going to change your main ideas. So you can use phrases like however, conversely, on the other hand, alternatively, but then you need to pick one or two pieces of evidence that you provide and explain that evidence. You use phrases like this means that, therefore, consequently, as a result of, because we can see from this. And then the last thing you need to do is link your paragraph and your points back to the main question to show the examiner that you're answering the question that's been asked. To do that, we use phrases like we can therefore see. It is clear that the most important factor is in conclusion. So these are the phrases I recommend trying to embed in your essays. They're going to boost your structure of your paragraphs, which is going to boost your, boost your cumulative mark, and it's going to boost your OE, because you're going to be using those linking words I discussed in the last uh, slide to kind of boost that OE and show the examiner that you're answering the set question that's been asked. Next up, we can look at how we plan for Leaving Cert History essays. So when planning for essays, I suggest looking at it from two different viewpoints, macro or big picture planning. So we zoom out all the way out and we look at, okay, what's the eight paragraph titles that I need to discuss in this essay or micro level planning. So we zoom in on each single paragraph and okay, we look at, okay, what is the evidence I need to provide for this essay? So I'm going to show you an example of my micro and macro plans. And then I, I suppose I'm going to look at how we start to plan those ourselves and, and self-regulate ourselves around that. Okay, so if we look at our macro plan here, this is for an essay what were the main events of the Eucharistic Congress in 1932 and how did it co uh, contribute to Irish identity? So the first thing that we need to do in every single paragraph is write an introduction. Our marking scheme tells us that we need to do that. And then we need to think about, OK, how we're planning for our essays so that every paragraph only deals with an episode, phase or stage in a sequence of events. The sequence of events here is the Eucharistic Congress and the lead up and uh, the events that took place over the week and the impact that they had. So each paragraph should just deal with one phase of that so if we look at first our first paragraph here the influence of the catholic church in irish society that's a phase in this sequence of events then we look at the organization of the congress the events over the week the mighty invasion of croke park promotion of church state relations and so on when we look at our micro plan our micro plans they're going to look a little something like this okay so it provides us with the finer details and the pieces of evidence that we need to discuss in every single paragraph so we're not going to go through every single phase or step of this micro plan here because it would obviously take us lots of time and this saturday session isn't about the eucharistic congress it's about how we study and structure our essays and um, but if we have a look at paragraph one here okay so paragraph one's essay title is the influence of the catholic church so when we're planning our micro plans, we need to provide four to six. If you remember our characteristics of good historical writing, we need four to six pieces of evidence for every single paragraph. So we need to come up with four to six pieces of evidence or historically correct references that's going to enable us to write an H1 standard paragraph here. So if we focus in on this, let's read through it together. The first piece of evidence we're going to use here is the Catholic Church is a powerful organization in our society. It influenced people at election time. There was excellent relationships between the clergy and lower classes in our society. They were able to influence ideas. And there was a poor relationship between clergy and upper class members. That was not common in Irish society. If we flick forward one more slide, just to show you that I've done this for eight different paragraphs on the essay. You can see paragraph three through six here. We've got four to six pieces or historically correct references for every single paragraph. That's going to enable us to structure and write our paragraphs at a high level. I'm going to skip forward. And I'm going to go through one paragraph and I'll go through how I write that paragraph once more. So if we look to. Well, we looked at social impacts in the earlier part of this session. So I'm going to look at social impacts here. So if we look at, I suppose, the pieces of evidence that was used to write that paragraph by my student, this was the evidence that uh, she was given. So consolidated the controversy of partition on the island. The success of the Eucharistic Congress enabled the development of an Irish state Catholic identity that was complete contrast to the Ulster Unionist identity, led to us versus them mentality. Catholics traveling from the north were attacked. People became proud of their Catholic Irish identity. So this was the these were the pieces of evidence that my student used to write that sample paragraph that you would have seen earlier that contained all those characteristics of good historical writing. 
your biggest takeaway here is, and I'll share my, my template will be sent over to you for our micro and macro plans, is to when you're planning for your essays or before you write an essay, you should sit down and plan, okay, what are the eight paragraph titles I'm going to write about? Those each paragraph title should be um, an episode phase or stage in a sequence of events. And then you should go micro planning, look at every single paragraph and pick out four to six factual pieces of evidence that are relevant to the paragraph title. And you just write them into the box. And then you sit down and you write each paragraph focusing on using that peel paragraph approach and that's going to enable you to become an excellent writer in history and it all contributes to that wider kind of study and learning of uh, the information for each paragraph oh yeah how i kind of go through that peel paragraph approach at my students now once again so once again with our peel paragraph and this is a great way if you're struggling to grasp that concept of what is a point what is evidence what is explanations and what is our link I'll give this kind of template to my students. And once again, this will be available for you guys to download, I believe. Um, and I just get students to write out, okay, what do you think the point is? What is the evidence? Write out your explanations, write out your link in this format. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So this is from another paragraph from the Eucharistic Congress. So we'll keep it all in line today. So the point is that the organization of the Congress demonstrates the building of community identity in the newly formed Irish Free State. Our evidence is Garda Commissioner was appointed as organizer. Second thing was parishes all over the country began organizing their areas. Third thing was the 1932 election was held or rearranged. And then fourth thing was doublers decorate the city. There are four pieces of evidence that we're gonna need. We can explain those evidence by saying stuff like how Owen O'Duffy would meticulously plan every detail of the event, finding homes, accommodation, and food for thousands of people expected to arrive. If we were gonna use number two as our piece of evidence, parishes all over the country began organizing their areas of the city. We could talk about how they would hold uh, prayer meetings and collect money for uh, decorations for the village. And we won't go into too much detail there, but we can see how each piece of evidence is linked to an explanation. So one is with one, two is with two, three is with three, four is with four. So now when we're structuring our paragraph, we can just follow that uh, kind of structure and that plan that will help kind of embed that peel paragraph approach in our writing. Last thing we need to do is link. So the organization of the Eucharist Cong Congress helped contribute towards the development of a distinctive Irish identity because the paragraph or the essay title asks us to discuss the Eucharistic Congress and its impact on identity. Paragraph looks like in reality then would be something like this. We use our point we pick our first piece of evidence and we explain it. We pick our second piece of evidence and explain it. We pick our third and then we write a link sentence. And that's going to be probably a little bit more than half a page. It's definitely going to score us around eight to nine or seven or eight, maybe actually in um, our cumulative mark from an examiner's point of view. Okay, folks, last thing we're going to cover today is how I show my students to study for Leaving Cert History Essays. So this template should become available to you guys, and it's how I study for those Leaving Cert History Essays. We think about how big that Leaving Cert History course, we have to be able to condense large amounts of information down to five key words, trigger words, paragraph titles. So hopefully when we come into our Leaving Cert Essay, all we need to remember is our eight paragraph titles. And we're going to be in a great spot and be able to recall information from each paragraph title. In order to engage in that process, we need to firstly chunk and condense information down into paragraph titles. And then we need to test ourselves from that paragraph title and test ourselves on our ability to recall information. I'm going to walk you through that process now. Just to show you what that might look like. If we just zoom up on this studying template for leaving cert history essays there's a couple of things that we need to do so for every paragraph we need to come up with four to six points so on average five points per paragraph so first paragraph for our eucharistic congress we're going to come up with well it's about uh, influence of catholic church in Irish society so we need to come up with four to six key points around that so i write my four to six key points i write them nice and small they're not to be developed they're just the main pieces of evidence that we need then we need to condense those four key points down into four key words. So it might look like this in this sense. Catholic Church was a powerful organization in Irish society. Goes to Catholic Church. Influenced people at election time. Influenced election. And so on. Then from those four uh, key words, we need to come up with two trigger words is what I suggest. So a trigger word is a word that's going to help trigger you remembering that information. So in this sense, my two trigger words were Catholic Church and influenced lower classes. Then we need to come up with a paragraph title that's gonna summarize all that information. On the exam day, all we, we're gonna to need to remember is our paragraph title 
and then we're going to be able to recall different pieces of information from that. So our paragraph title here would be the influence of the Catholic Church in Irish society. Let's go through how this works in reality. All right, lads, this video is going to cover how we study for our Leaving Cert History essays. So you can see from our worksheet here, we have four different columns. First one says five key points, five key words, trigger words, and a paragraph title. Now, we're only to actually use this um, study worksheet once we have completed a Leaving Cert History essay. We've gotten feedback from myself. We've applied that feedback and it's up to the standard that we want. So in the first column here, we have to summarize the five key points from your first paragraph within that essay. So you can see I'm summarizing them nice and small to make it a little bit easier to rem remember. I've got points like Redmond and the Home Rule Party introduced the third Home Rule Bill, Ireland get it to get its own parliament, list of limitations, Britain can still interfere. Then we have to take those five key points and condense that down into five memorable keywords. So I have went for Redmond, Parliament, Limitations, um, Irish Laws and a big X to say it wasn't successful. Now I have to turn those five keywords into what I like to think of two trigger words, words that are going to help us remember those five keywords. And then we come to the last section here and we add a paragraph title. So that paragraph deals with the introduction of the third Home Rule Bill in Ireland. Then we go down to paragraph two. Once again, we, we're using our completed um, and updated essay where we've applied our feedback. And in the first column, we need to summarize the five, five key points from paragraph two. We summarize them nice and small. We're not rewriting the paragraph here. So for here, I've wrote 470,000 men signed the Solemn League and Covenant, some sign in their own blood, symbolism. Um, I've also uh, put down there the formation of the UVF defeat the present conspiracy, the quote I want to use. And I've also put as quit does nothing. So then I need to condense those five key points into five key words. So I've wrote 470,000 blood UVF conspiracy and as quit. Now I need to add two trigger words for our paragraph that's going to help trigger the key words that I'm trying to memorize. So I'm writing Ulster, Solemn League and Covenant in UVF. And then I need to add a paragraph title here. Now I've actually made a mistake on the paragraph title and I've just rewritten my trigger words. Paragraph title here is uh, Unionist Opposition to Home Rule. So we keep going for all eight paragraph titles for our essay and then we get a blank bit of paper, okay? And this is where the important part of our study comes in here. So now we use the columns within our worksheet to test ourselves. So I cover, put a white piece of paper over and I cover it and I try to test myself. Okay, what was the paragraph title for paragraph one? What were the trigger words? And I correct it as I go. Now I knew, now I move down to, can I remember the five keywords? So I try to remember the five key words that I've listed there. I can't remember the fourth or fifth here. I'm going to make a guess at the fourth, but I can't remember the fifth for the life of me. Now I test or I check my, um, self-assess my keywords against the keywords list and I add the one that I've missed in red pen so I know I can identify uh, the gaps in my own knowledge and now we go down to the five key points and I often find that the five key points are fine once I get five of the keywords the five keywords are where I struggle so now I'm just trying to use the keywords to memorize the points what's important here is you're just honest with yourself and you actually test yourself this Worksheet is pointless unless you're actually completing the testing element of it. So now I use the five key words to retrieve the five key points from that paragraph. And then we just do the same, correct them, and we move down to paragraph two. So I need to remember the paragraph title, so it's Ulster Opposition. Now I need to still covering, I check it, and I cover the trigger words. Okay, my trigger words here were the Solemn League and Covenant and the UVF. And we continue this process on for our whole essay. And what's amazing about this, I suppose, study tactic for Leave Insert History essays, you literally just keep the worksheet. You only have to complete it once and you can go back to each essay and uh, test yourself at each essay at regular intervals. So if I test myself here for this essay, attempts to say, obtain self-government 1911 to 23, I might leave it two weeks and come back and retest myself to see what I can remember, helping to identify the gaps in my knowledge. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it there, lads. Um, literally send me a message if you are struggling with this, but I'll speak to you in class uh, once again.
So just before we finish up on today's Saturday session, just going to kind of highlight what's available on exam revisions website once again. So once again, we have our self-correcting or we have our pre-recorded video lessons that covers every single topic on the course. They're usually about 10 to 15 minutes long. And it's me explaining each episode phase or stage in a sequence of events. So if you look at the Montgomery bus boycott, I explain the general concepts around that and the steps and phases of that sequence of events that led to um, or that contributed so hugely towards the overall civil rights movement. Then we have our self-correcting quizzes, my favorite aspect of this. Once again, hopefully you, you, your biggest takeaway here is if you're looking to study successfully for Leaving Cert History, you need to be self-quizzing, you need to be testing yourself. We're studying for a test. In that test, you have to be able to recall large amounts of information from just different titles and different kind of trigger words in your head. You need to test yourself and be practicing that skill. We also have H1 standard notes, PowerPoints available and every single past paper question for each topic. I'm going to leave it there, folks. Hopefully today has been beneficial for you. Um, and hopefully your biggest takeaways is your understanding of the Leaving Cert History Marking Scheme, how that tells us everything we need to know, what we need to write, how long our paragraphs need to be, how we should structure our paragraphs, what type of information should be included in that, what a paragraph should be about, how long our essay should be. And then we looked at those study tactics that help boost your ability to recall information in the Leaving Cert History exam. You shouldn't be learning off whole essays. You should be learning off paragraph titles and should be testing yourself and practicing that skill of recalling information from each paragraph title. Anyway, folks, I'm going to leave it there and I'll speak to you soon.